Good morning, Edgewater. So good to see all of you gathered here this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and be here with us today. Uh, my name is Dan Prine. I'm the pastor here at Edgewater and uh, just so glad that you're here with us this morning, um, especially if you're here for the first time. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and be here. Uh, and we just pray that you find this to be a place that you can connect with God, that you can connect with other people, that you find this to be a place that you can call home. Um, if you are here for the first, second, or third time, please take a moment. Um, on the edge of the bulletin, there's a little tear-off section um, where it says guest card. If you'll please take a moment, fill that out, uh, and at the end of the service, you can drop it in one of the giving boxes in the back of the room. We would really appreciate that. Um, also, on the back side of that is a place for prayer requests or caring needs. If you have anything along those lines, you can put that on, on that section, and those will go in the giving boxes as well. Um, also, just don't forget that uh, the giving boxes are back there for our, our giving today for us to get a chance to, to participate in that, to get a chance to give back to God a portion of what he's given to us in the first place. It's part of how, how we grow in getting to know him, getting to trust him, trusting that the, the, the God's, uh, that the, when we give, that the, the 90% that is blessed that we have by giving the 10% tithe to God is better than the 100% that's not blessed by God. And so uh, the, those giving boxes are in the back of the room, so please be sure to use those after the service. Um, be sure to look through the bulletin, lots of stuff going on. I wanted to remind you that uh, right after the 11 o'clock service today is our prayer partners luncheon. If you're part of the prayer partners, or maybe maybe you feel God kind of uh, helping you grow in the area of prayer, or, or maybe that's something you'd like to get involved in, I encourage you to stick around for that. It's going to be right after the 11 o'clock service in, in the gathering place. Uh, if you go down the hallway, it's going to be the, the room on the left-hand side. Uh, we would love for you to get a chance to be there this afternoon. Um, also, don't forget we have our Connect to God and Community event that's coming up on Saturday, January 25th. Uh, if you're able to attend that, there's some information at the bottom of a website. And some great nationally known speakers are going to be there. It's an event just right here in our district. Um, so I encourage you to find out a little bit more about that. Um, last week, we talked about uh, uh, finding our, our God-sized mission for our life and getting a chance to live that out. And, it was, and, and the importance of listening to God. And remember, we, we ask you to, to pray that little prayer each day, to pray, God, speak to me. And so uh, it's my prayer that you did that. It was neat to get a chance to hear some stories this week about how God has spoken to some of you and how you've responded, and it's really uh, built your faith and helped you to grow closer to Him. Um, also, uh, some of you have said, well, you know, maybe I just need to... to, to, to Start figuring out what it is. And, and one of the great ways to figure out what God's mission is for your life is to just get out and start doing stuff, volunteering, and you'll find maybe where that area of passion is. There are a few areas in a few places where we need some volunteer help around here. You'll see some information here in the bulletin, the thrift store, working in the office, uh, but also getting a chance to be a part of our, our caring community, uh, the folks who, who visit folks in the hospital or, or, or call those who, who may be uh, homesick, things like that. Uh, so you'll see some information there. I just encourage you to jump in, try something out, find a way to get connected and serve. Um, one thing I also wanted to let you know that's not in the bulletin, um, we, it, you may or may not be aware, we have a couple of sister churches in Cuba, two sister churches that we, that we support uh, uh, financially and with our prayers, and they pray for us. And, and one of the things that we do is periodically we'll send some folks down there to get a chance to, to visit throughout the, uh, the, the Cuban churches down in that area. And uh, Charlie and Joanne Johnson are heading down there at the end of this month. And we're really excited about them getting a chance to, to go. And one of the things that we like to do is, is we're able to, to send some things with them. We kind of pack them like pack mules heading down to, the, down to Cuba. Um, things like uh, the children's vitamins, um, uh, some types of hygiene items, uh, the little LED flashlights, things like that are, are, are always very helpful and well received down there. Um, if you're able to help out, maybe you're interested in helping out. If you don't have something specific you can bring and you maybe just want to write a check for it, you can put Cuba in the memo line of the check and we'll be sure that it goes to there. You can drop that in the giving boxes. Uh, but also Phil Cole is going to be out at the, uh, the Welcome Center out in the lobby and there's a big box there. Um, they, they have lists of things that, that they need so maybe you just want to grab one of these lists and go to a, a local drugstore and, and pick up some things. We would really encourage you to do that. The only thing is that we need these things back here by next week because they have to then pack it and weigh it and make sure that it's going to be uh, able to, to take down there. So please be sure to stop by the Welcome Center and talk to Phil about helping out with the folks going on our Cuba trip. Well, I'm really excited about what God has in store. We had a great night last night in, in worship and, and uh, getting a chance to just lift our hearts up to God, spending time just having the Holy Spirit come and, and lift our hearts as we, we worship and praise Him. God's Word says that God inhabits the praise of His people, so let's invite His presence here as we stand and sing together this morning. 
song for you today. It's called uh, Here For You. It's a Matt Redman song. And um, I'm just reminded that God created all of us for his purpose. And in his image, we were created by God and for God. So listen to this song. If you know it, sing along. Our hearts are open, nothing here. 
heart for me A life that shouts and sings The greatness of the King Glory to God Glory to God Give Him all the glory Glory to God Forever Glory to God Glory to God Glory to God Forever
Let's take a moment. Let's go before God in prayer. God, thank you so much for this time that we have together today to be able to to worship you. And God, your word does say that you inhabit the praise of your people. And so so each time that we we spend this time praising you, not only just in this this one hour on on Sunday mornings, but all throughout our lives, even in the midst of our day, your presence can be with us when we stop to praise you. So God, I pray that you help that to be a kind of a defining characteristic of who we are, that we are a people of praise, that, that in everything that we do, we, we, we lift up your name in praise, that it's not dependent on our circumstances, that we just only praise you when we feel things are going the way we want it to or going, going well in our terms, but that God, no matter what is going on. That even in in the depths of our despair, in the midst of our struggles, in the throes of our hurts, that we can still praise you because then, God, you draw near. And you are there with us in the midst of whatever it is that's going on in our lives. And it helps us to be able to keep a sense of perspective. Knowing that you truly are uh, bigger than any problem that we might face. that, That you are stronger than any obstacle that we might encounter. So God, I just ask that you draw near to us today. And maybe there are some folks here today who, who, are, who are at a point that they just don't know what to do. They're, they're stuck. They feel trapped. They, they maybe, maybe feel alone. But God, draw near today and let them know that they are not alone. That, that your presence is with them, that they have the opportunity to be connected in community here at Edgewater. And that we get a chance to be that for others as well. So God, even in the midst of whatever is going on, uh, you, you've drawn us here today for this, this time together. There's not a single person who's here by accident. You have a divine appointment with each and every one of us. And so God, I pray that you speak to us. It's some, that's something that uh, we're not always comfortable with because we don't know what to expect. It's not necessarily the, uh, the norm for our lives. But God, honestly, the norm for our lives just isn't cutting it because we, we stumble and we get lost and we, we run into things and we, we get hurt. And so, God, I just pray that you help us to not settle for just the norm. But to truly strive for for your best, your presence with us in everything that we do. Draw near to us, God. So we just want to take a moment right now that whatever it is that's going on in our hearts, that we can just take a second and, and, and lift these things up to you. in in the quiet of our hearts, in a moment of silent prayer. God, thank you so much for uh, the way that you hear our prayers, that you do draw near to us. God, we just pray that you pour out your spirit here today. That, uh, 
that you work and move in our lives, God. You, you have a, a God-sized mission for each of us. And I pray that you allow us to, uh, to know that it's not something that's going to happen on our own power, on our own strength, but only when we turn to you and trust you and completely live for you. And so, God, I pray that you'll give us the courage to do that. God, we pray for, uh, for our community. So many people out in this community who, who may be far from you and they're, and they're hurting and they're lost and alone. God, draw them to you. Use us how you see fit to be able to just invite them to come along so that they can get a chance to, uh, to find healing for their, for their hurts, that they can find wholeness for their brokenness, that they can find forgiveness for their sins, and that they can have this abiding, abounding relationship with you. So God, we, just, we, we pray for our community. We know that you love, you love this community, and God, help us to love this community like you do. And so as we've joined our hearts together in this time in prayer, now we join our hearts and voices together as together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, well, this morning we are in week two of our series called Dare to Dream, based on Michael Slaughter's book of the same name. Um, and uh, if you missed last week, I encourage you to, to get online at edgewaterchurch.com. Uh, we put, post the sermons up there every week. A lot of times they're floating around Facebook, too. Uh, we'd love for you to get a chance to, to get uh, caught up along those lines. Um, but uh, also, I want to just uh, be sure to give a thanks to the Grace Church teaching team for all their hard work putting the materials together. Uh, this is something that 10 churches are doing together in this district. We're kind of all walking this journey together. And so there are churches all throughout southwest Florida who, who are reading this book and, and, and walking with us along this journey. And we're really excited about what God has in store for us. And so along those lines, as we get ready to see what God's word has in store for us this morning, let's take a moment. Let's pray together, please. God, thank you for this time together this morning. I pray that you give me the words to say that you want me to say, that you will help us to hear what you want us to hear, that you will give us the courage and the strength to act on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there is a, a pastor and teacher and, and author by the name of uh, Tony Campolo. And he once told a story about his home church uh, where on a particular Sunday, his African-American pastor was giving a a sermon to the students who were getting ready to graduate. And and so his sermon was very straight to the point. He started out, he said, children, you are going to die. You know, one of these days, the hearse is going to take you to the cemetery, going to drop you in a hole, and everyone's going to go back to the church and eat potato salad. Don't think I could get away with that one. But, uh, but he, he said, when, when you were born, you were crying and everybody else was happy. Here's the question. When you die, will you be the only happy one while everyone else is crying? And the answer depends on whether you lived to get titles or testimonies. That's a choice that all of us have to make in life. Are, are we going to live for titles or testimonies? Are we going to live our lives for the, for the, uh, the, for the acclaim of the crowd uh, in, in the pursuit of things that the world deems as success? Or are we going to be living our lives to be able to, 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 to leave testimonies of God's grace poured out into the lives of others? Last week we talked about the fact that, that Scripture says that we are representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we kind of broke that word down, how we are supposed to represent Jesus Christ in everything that we say Everything that we do, it, it's supposed to just, just ooze Jesus. It's supposed, if it, it's supposed to look like Jesus and feel like Jesus. And, and if it doesn't, then there's, then there's some disconnect there. 
but that we're supposed to, to just have these Christ-like characteristics so much as a part of us that, that we are representing Christ in everything that we say and do. As, as we've said, you may have heard in church before, that, that in Jesus we, we live and move and have our being. That we're just permeated with Jesus. But, but so often we, 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 don't, we don't live for that. You know, God, God didn't create us and save us and empower us just for mere survival. You know, so often we find that we're just kind of marking time through life, just waiting until we die. And, and, and we're not living to our fullest. We're just kind of settling. Nothing breaks my heart more for us as, 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 as folks that, than just settling and just getting by when there's so much more to live for. There's more to life even than the pursuit of success. A media tycoon Ted Turner was asked to describe his success and his wealth, and he said it was like holding an empty paper bag. What matters in life is a sense of significance. What matters is being able to leave behind testimonies. What matters in life is to be able to dare to dream, to understand the unique God-sized mission in your life. And, and that's what these weeks together in this Dare to Dream series are all about. We're, we're praying that, that God might focus our attention on, on helping each person here discover his or her specific and individual God-sized mission. Because we talked last week about the fact that God does have a God-sized mission for each and every one of our lives. It's not just reserved for those that we look at as spiritual giants. Each and every one of us has a God-sized mission that, that he has in store for us. And then what did we talk last week about what that mission will be? Kind of the three characteristics. That, that the mission will, will honor God. And that, uh, that will, it'll bless others. And that through it we will have a sense of joy and significance as well. Okay? And, and, and imagine if that is how your life would be characterized. If you lived every day of your life in a way that would honor God and bless others. And therefore fill you with joy. That would be a pretty good life. I'd, I'd, I'd like to be able to have that said of me. And the, this kind of full life, this kind of abundant life, that's why Jesus, that's what He came to do. He, he said this to His followers in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, the second part of that verse. He says, My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. So that we don't have to just squeak by, that we don't have to just settle, that, that we don't have to just make it through, but that we get to live life in all its fullness fullness in in a world where most people just try to survive or or chase success or acclaim or the pursuit of things jesus came to give supernatural significance to everyone who would follow after him and then this full life experience is available to us today he wasn't just talking to that group of folks that was gathered around him at that time we read even even later as we go on in scripture in the book of acts which kind of uh, it, it comes right after the Gospels in the New Testament. The Gospels tell the story of Jesus' life. The book of Acts kind of tells the story of the beginning of the church. And, and in, the, in the book of Acts, God sent the, the, the Holy Spirit to, to those first followers of Jesus that were kind of anxiously waiting to see what was going to happen next. You remember uh, Jesus, Jesus died and then he, he was resurrected and then he ascended into heaven. But he said, wait, because the, the counselor is going to come to you. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So they were just kind of waiting to see what was going to happen and, and then one day that, that happened in an incredible event, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. And then suddenly this gift of, of understanding and unity came to, to unite these people from, from different cultures. And Scripture describes the scene as if, as if tongues of fire descended upon them. And, and the people were just, they were blown away, they were amazed, probably a little confused too at the time. Uh, and and, and so they, they kind of went out into the street and they were speaking in these other languages and, and, and the people were saying, oh, well, they're just drunk at 10 o'clock here in the morning. They're drunk already. Uh, but, but, the, but the Apostle Peter spoke up for them and, and he told them that, hey, this is the day that we've all been waiting for as Jewish people, that, that we've been waiting for this day to come. And so the Apostle Peter quotes from a, a section in the Old Testament uh, from the prophet Joel. And, and we read what he, what he said in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 19. Where he says, in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. 
In those days I will pour out my Spirit on all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Now, now it says when God pours out His Spirit on, on men and women of all ages, they will prophesy. Now, I know when we look at that word prophesy, a lot of times we kind of have some preconceived notions as to what that means. Maybe we think of, of, uh, of, of just someone who's like trying to tell the future or whatever, but that's, that's, that's kind of a limited uh, view of what it means to prophesy. Um, to prophesy is to be able to be so closely united to God that you can speak for God in both word and deed. Let me, let me say that one more time. That to prophesy is to be able to be so closely united to God that, that you can speak for God in both word and deed. So, so when people prophesy, they, they dare to dream how to present to the world an alternative future in, in keeping with God's kingdom. To, to paint a picture of this preferred reality of how God is working. When, when God pours out His Spirit on a person, they are invited to begin living this God-sized mission in their lives. And so will you begin to dare to dream God's dream for your life this morning? I know it can be scary. I know sometimes we step back and we say, oh, well, who, who am I to do that? And we have this kind of low spiritual self-esteem. But no, don't give in to that. God has a God-sized mission for each of you. So open yourself up to that this morning because this is so important. Because God is, is like looking out to find the people who will dare to dream. Because He has so much for us to accomplish. So much for us to do in His name. To make the realities of heaven the realities here on earth. Because He's given these dreams. He's speaking. We just need to listen. Because maybe God is telling someone here that they need to feed the hungry. That, 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 that there's someone here who needs to stand up for justice. That there's somebody here this morning who needs to help children find grace and challenge teenagers to live a life that matters. Because someone needs to befriend the lonely and and encourage the downtrodden and help the aged and visit the sick and and love the imprisoned and clothe the naked. Somebody here needs to bring peace to our politics. Someone here needs to bring a sense of reverence to our science and, and compassion to our system of justice. Someone here needs to, to, to dream a dream about relieving suffer, suffering from generational poverty. Someone here needs to plant churches for the two billion people in our world who have no church in their village, no Bible in their language, and no Christian in their life. God is, is calling us to dream these dreams, and He's ready to resource us, ready to strengthen us, ready to guide us, and send us on this dream if we will but be willing to dream. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen through my life. I've seen, I've seen followers of Jesus discover their God-sized mission. And, and, and to, to be able to move heaven into the hearts of people and, and communities and companies and schools and neighborhoods and, and desperate situations. Now, few of these people gained titles, but they are leaving behind testimony. So how can we do this? How, how can we discover this God-sized mission for our lives? How, how can we help live out this mission that we have here at Edgewater of helping people meet, know, and serve Jesus Christ? You know, the, the people who, who live their life on mission, the, the folks who leave behind these testimonies, they have the ability to, to hear the quiet whisper of God directing their life. They, they know God speaks and they have, they have tuned their life. They have maybe cleared out some clutter. They're intentional about time to, to be able to hear the voice of God. Now, now that, that all, all sounds good, but I've I got to let you know that this has been an area in my life that, that, that I've struggled with from time to time. I, I've had my share of, of suspicions and skepticism and confusion about this whole topic of being able to listen to God. When I, when I hear someone come up to me and say, well, I've got a word from the Lord for you, more often than not, my first response is, oh, really? Well, why don't you tell me, and then I will be the judge of that. Be, because because I've, been, I've, been, I've allowed myself to become jaded. I, I, I've put up a wall sometimes in, in those places. A lot of times it, it's um, because of some overexposure to folks, folks who maybe tend to over-sensationalize what, what they see as their connection to God. 
Because we've all seen it. When, when people do crazy things and they say it's in the name of Christianity, and one of the first things they say as they're interviewed, what do they say? Well, God told me to do it. And it just blows it for the rest of us. Because we don't want to be lumped in with, with them. But the problem is, is then we build this wall around us and, and we don't listen and we miss out on what God is wanting to say to us. And, and we miss out on this dream that He wants us to dream. Sometimes maybe we don't hear God because we do feel that, that God speaking to people is only reserved for those super spiritual faith giants, those folks who, who, that we all look up to. That he, Billy Graham has the red hotline phone on his desk and that's it. He's the only one that, that God speaks to. Sometimes maybe when I thought I heard God's voice, I, I later realized that it was my own ego or my own brokenness or some other voice speaking into my life. It's almost, it's almost never good in my mind when I'm listening to myself. But that doesn't change the fact that I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God speaks to people. And I know that there are times that He has spoken to me in my life and that I've heard that still small voice and, and that, that whisper that has changed my life. So, for the rest of our time this morning, we're going to try to clear up some of the confusion about listening to God. And, and, and just, I've been praying that, that, that God would, would kind of take down some of the barriers that we have in our hearts. So that we could hear from the Holy Spirit clearly about what our God-sized mission is. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at a case study of someone from the Old Testament who, who did that, who listened to God. And so uh, there's a story in the Old Testament about a Bible hero named Samuel. Now, Samuel was one of those folks who did happen to have a lot of titles in his day and age. He served as a prophet and a judge and and a counselor for all of Israel as as Israel was going through kind of a time of of transition. He was was a kingmaker. He he anointed the first two kings of Israel, King Saul and King David. But but the most significant thing that Samuel left, it, it was testimony about how he listened to God and then responded. He had the guts to follow God's direction. In, in Hebrews chapter 11 in the New Testament, it's, it's a, a chapter that a lot of people call the Hall of Faith. It's like this, this Hall of Fame of people who had tremendous faith. And Samuel is listed in there. And, and in fact, he was so respected across all of Israel that in 1 Samuel 3.19, the Bible says that God did not let one of Samuel's words fall to the ground. That's a testimony. Now, now I, like, I like finding out the stories of how, um, how influential people kind of got their start. And, uh, and, and Samuel's story is, is, is interesting. His, his mother Hannah was, was a barren woman who uh, had prayed for a child and God blessed her with Samuel. Uh, the name Samuel uh, comes from the Hebrew expression, heard of God. Okay, so, so because God had heard Hannah's prayer. And so in gratitude for, uh, for uh, God hearing her prayer, uh, Hannah took Samuel to the tabernacle when he was only like three or four years old to have him live there and, and serve as an assistant to a priest named Eli. Now, early on in Eli's tenure as priest, he was uh, very admirable, very well respected. Um, but, but, you know, while he was an excellent leader, he, he had a difficult time dealing with his sons. Eli's two sons took advantage of their dad's position. They, uh, they started stealing the sacrifices that were meant for God. And they took them for themselves. They, they slept with the women who were working at the tabernacle. They showed total disrespect to, to God's grace. They kind of thumbed their noses at the whole sacrificial system that God had put into place. And Eli let it happen. He, he let it continue. So with all that kind of soap opera as, as the, the backdrop here, uh, let's hear the, Samuel, the story of Samuel listening to God. Uh, the, there's, an, there's a book in the Old Testament called 1 Samuel. Um, there's one called 2 Samuel too. But uh, in 1 Samuel, we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 3. What we're going to do is we're going to read verses 1 through 14, and then we're going to go back and hit a couple highlights. But here's, here's the story of Samuel listening to God. It says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel was serving the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had just gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He jumped up and ran to Eli. Here I am, what do you need? 
I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go on back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel jumped up and ran to Eli. Here I am. What do you need? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go on back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So so now the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel jumped up and ran to Eli. Here I am, he said. What do you need? Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, yes, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family. I've warned him continually that judgment is coming for his family because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. So so there's a lot in this story, but what I want to kind of do is sift through it and and kind of come up with these these observations about listening to God and and about how we can apply that to our God-sized mission. So the first thing, on the back of your bulletin, there's a place you can write some of these, these things down if you'd like. I encourage you to maybe make a few notes here. But just a couple of observations on listening to God about my god sized mission. The first thing is this is that God speaks to anyone. God speaks to anyone. What what did it say in in that first verse, in in, uh, verse 1 of that chapter? It says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel was serving the the Lord by assisting Eli. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. Now, in in the past, earlier on, God had spoken directly to Moses and, and Joshua. We read all about that. But by the time they got to Eli and Samuel's time, there were no prophets that were speaking God's messages to Israel. And, and so I'm sure that the last person anyone expected God to actually talk to was, was this little boy helping out in the temple. I mean, if, if he was going to talk to anyone, you'd think he'd talk to Eli, the priest. But no, not, not this little boy. But, but God called for Samuel and not for Eli. And again, Samuel thought it was Eli who was calling, and he, and, and he ran up to him and asked him what he wanted. But Eli said it wasn't him, go on back to bed, and that happened three times. Samuel didn't know that that God is the God who speaks to anyone who listens. We see all throughout Scripture uh, the the evidence of this. That God speaks to to unsuspecting people who who don't have maybe uh, impressive titles or a long list of qualifications. But but that... That maybe they're, they're, they're seemingly proper enough to be the one that the Lord would speak to. We, we just celebrated Advent. What, what, what about the Christmas story? You read through the Christmas story and it's chock full of people that God spoke to that, that the, the religious leaders wouldn't have thought that God would go anywhere near. Mary, this, this young girl, Joseph, her fiancé, the shepherds of all people, uh, Elizabeth, Simeon. Their, their only qualifications were their humility, their, their availability, and just the fact that they listen. In his book, The Power of a Whisper, Bill Hybels uh, describes a time in second grade when he, when he heard this story about Samuel. And uh, he was captivated by it. Normally at his school, they would have the morning Bible story and then they'd run out for re- recess. But when he heard this story, he was kind of just glued to his seat. All the other kids left. And and this is what he writes about that situation. He says, When the room had emptied, save for Miss Van Solen and me, I eased out of my desk, stuffed my hands deep in my pockets, and walked up to my teacher. What is it, Billy? She asked, probably fearing the worst, given that it was recess and I was still indoors. Um, Miss Van Solen, I said, as my throat began to choke up, does God still speak to little boys? She smiled and let out a relieved sigh. Placing her two hands on my small shoulders, she looked me square in the eye. Oh, yes, Billy, she said. He most certainly does. And if you learn to quiet yourself and listen, he will even speak to you. And, and she gave him a copy of a, of a poem by J.D. Burns that, that Bill, even as a second grader, went home and memorized. And, 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 it, and it, the poem says, uh, Oh, give me Samuel's ear, an open ear, O Lord, alive and quick to hear. Each whisper of thy word, like him to answer to thy call and to obey thee first of all. And throughout his life, Bill Hybels has prayed that prayer over and over again. And God's whispers have shaped and defined his life. And you know what? I believe, along with his teacher, that God still does speak to little boys 
and little girls and teenagers and young adults and adults and senior adults and where, whatever category you may place yourself in. Can you pray that prayer? God, give me Samuel's ear. And then listen for God's whisper. Because stepping into a God-sized mission involves first being willing to listen. Now, now listening is very important because of the next observation from the story, and that's the fact that I can miss God's voice. I can miss God's voice. When when Jesus taught, let those who have ears, let them hear, um, He wasn't uh, excluding the hearing impaired folks. He was encouraging people not to miss out on the Word of God being spoken to them. We see how Samuel almost missed hearing God's voice in in verse 7, where it says Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. Samuel almost missed God's voice. And what would have happened if he had missed it? I mean, God's purposes ultimately would have prevailed, but we probably wouldn't have a first and second Samuel in the Bible. You know, who knows what would have happened with with King Saul and King David? Would, Would they have ever been anointed as kings, what would have happened to Israel? We don't, we don't know. But that verse that we read kind of lifts up the reason, uh, one of the reasons why we can miss God's voice. There are lots of reasons. One of them is, is that maybe we are inexperienced. Maybe we are immature in the faith. Maybe we're still kind of new at this and we haven't uh, developed that, uh, that, that sense of hearing from God. Um, that, that's why it's so important. That's why we're always talking around here about how important it is to find that next step Wherever you are along the journey, whether you're just getting started or whether you've been at it for a while, it's so important to find that next step, to continue to grow, to continue to mature in your faith. Because as you do, you get a chance to hear God's voice more clearly. We we have to be willing to take those steps forward. Um, There there was a boy who who fell out of his bed one night. Uh, The dad heard the thump on the floor and came running in, and, and he picked up the child and dried his tears and got him back into bed. And, and when things calmed down a little bit, the dad asked his son, well, what happened? What, what caused you to fall out of bed? And, and still kind of sobbing, the toddler said, I don't know, I, I, guess I, I guess I went to sleep too close to where I got in. You know, living on the edge is a problem. And not just for toddlers, but for those of us as, as, as Christians as well. Because I'll tell you what, some of us have just stuck our toe in the, in the shallow end of the pool of, of God's grace, and we've never gone any deeper. Don't be content with just splashing around in the kiddie pool. I mean, you remember when the you remember the first time you got to swim in the deep end of the pool? You know that there's that there's that mysterious line across the bottom in the blue tile or whatever. And I remember that I wasn't allowed to go past until I could until I had developed the strength and the ability to finally move forward. But man, it was awesome when I finally got to go in the deep end. But but so often we just settle. We settle for just being in the kiddie pools, in the, in the shallow end, where, where, there's, where there's no excitement, where, where, where we're not getting a chance to be completely soaked by God's grace. We miss out on so much just staying in the shallow end. And you know what? If God's love has reached out to you, it's time to get connected. It's time to grow. To, to grow in your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. To get connected to the church in some type of small group, some type of service opportunity. Something beyond this one hour on Sunday morning. It's so important. There, there are other things that, that can kind of block us from hearing from God. Not, not just our, our, our um, newness in the faith maybe. But sometimes ongoing patterns of sin in our life can, can block God's voice. Uh, but the Bible says that, that here in Christian community is, is, is a place where we can do what's described in James 5.16 where it says that we need to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed. So we can find some freedom from the things that have been holding us back. If you're connected, it's time to begin to be more and more conformed to the image of Christ, allowing these Christ-like characteristics to show up in our lives so we can truly represent Christ in everything that we do. Now, sometimes also one of the reasons why we miss out on, on God's Word is because, because we're not connected to God's Word through Scripture. I mean, so often God speaks through the, the, the words that we find here in Scripture. It, it informs our, our day-to-day life. I mean, you remember that story we read from the book of Acts about uh, Peter, 
Uh, when, when he got up to preach that, that sermon on that, that day of Pentecost, he didn't just throw out his own words. What did he do? He went back to Scripture. He was quoting the prophet Joel and, and, and using that to, 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 to speak God's word to the people. Also, Scripture is also useful that maybe if you have received kind of a, a word from the Lord, if, if you're beginning to discern what this God-sized mission is, compare it to Scripture. Because God's not going to contradict Himself. If maybe what you're hearing, what you're, what you're maybe pursuing is contrary to what you read in Scripture, then, then it's probably not the right direction. It's probably some other voice that's pulling you in another direction. But, but if it checks out with what God's Word says, if it's consistent with Scripture, then that may be a green light to go ahead and, and, and take the next step. So, so it's important for us to, to, uh, to continue to, to, to grow and develop so we can get a chance to hear God better. The, the last thing, the third thing that we're looking at here is that we're not supposed to do this alone and just to acknowledge that I need help. I need help to hear God's voice. It, it's not good for anyone to be alone, especially when it comes to hearing from God. We, we need one another. What was that experience that, 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 uh, that Samuel had? He, he kept going back to Eli. And, and finally, Eli, even though he was kind of an imperfect mentor, he, he knew what to do. He told him, hey, this is what you need to do. Go back and say, yes, Lord, your servant's listening. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that I admire about our Celebrate Recovery ministry here on Monday nights is, is this kind of constant encouragement to find a sponsor. And, and the invitation always goes something like this. You know, to find a sponsor, find someone who's got what you want and ask them to help you. And that's good advice for all of us who are in recovery from sin, because we're all in recovery from sin. And so what we need to do is we need to find someone who has what we want and then ask them to help us along that journey. We need mentors who are maybe a few steps ahead of us down the path so that we can learn from some of their wisdom. Samuel's mentor, he was far from perfect, but he still was able to learn from him what he needed to do. So if you and I live out our lives Listening for God's whisper, God is speaking. We just need to be ready to listen. And, and as, as we live out this God-sized mission, we may not leave behind big fancy titles, but we will leave behind God-honoring testimonies of God's grace shown through our lives. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for uh, this time that we have together today. God, I thank you that you do speak. And God, I thank you for those times that we do listen. I pray that you help that to become more and more the norm of, of our lives. That, that, that you're speaking and we're listening and then we're acting on it and responding. Because God, when we do that, it, it builds our faith. It helps us to be able to hear your voice even more clearly. So God, I pray that you'll, you'll speak to us. As, as I know there are some folks that I've talked to through this week that are hearing your voice, those who are responding and, and beginning to discern this God-sized mission that you've put on their lives. God, just walk with all of us, especially those who maybe don't feel like they have one. Those who are suffering from a, a poor spiritual self-image. God, lift them up. Remind them of your love for them. Remind them of how you have a, a plan for their lives. Maybe as you're here this morning, you're wondering, does God even really have a plan for my life? I've never really turned my heart over to Him. I, I've never stepped across that line of faith. I haven't even put my, I haven't even put my pinky toe in the, in the kiddie pool yet. Well, I, would, I just want to let you know that, uh, that today is the day that you can do that. You're, you're not here by, by accident. God has a divine appointment with you today, and maybe today is the day that you step across that line of faith, that you just dive right into the pool of faith. Because we have the opportunity, because of God's grace in our lives, to experience forgiveness of our sins, to find healing for our wholeness, to, to find it and the, the strength and joy that we need to make it through day to day. And, and all of that is made available just by entering into this relationship with you that starts with uh, just a simple prayer. And so uh, I just want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me and pray it out loud. Because sometimes we need to hear our own voices say it out loud so that it sinks in uh, the reality of what we're saying. And, and you're not going to be doing it alone. Like that third point said, we're not in this on our own. But uh, to be able to do this together. So we're going to all be praying it with you. 
um, to, to encourage you and support you, but also because we want to reaffirm it in our own lives. And so I just invite you to repeat after me and pray, Dear God, save me from my sins. Make me new. I believe you died for me so I could live for you. Fill me with your spirit so I could serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for new life. I give you mine in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer for the first time today and, 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 and meant it from your heart, we're so excited for this new life that has begun in you. Let's praise God for the way that He works in our lives and uh, draws us to Him, giving us this, this opportunity to a fresh start. And so if you did pray that prayer for the first time today, I want to encourage you, stop by our yes table in the back corner of the worship center. Uh, we've got some materials there, a, a Bible to kind of help you get into God's word to start off, to start this new journey of, of faith. I encourage you to do that after the service. Um, we're going to take a little bit of time now to just continue and, and worship, maybe let God kind of cement some things in our hearts, our commitment to him, our commitment to, to reach out to the world around us. Um, while we sing this last song, if you'd like to come and spend some time in prayer at the altars on either side, you're welcome to do that. Or you can just stay in your seat, sing along with the song, and let this kind of be some, some personal worship time for you. But uh, let's, let's take some time to turn our hearts to God. before creation eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stay you stood before my
standing, I invite you to stand to receive the benediction this morning. Um, as, as we get ready to do that, I just wanted to remind you that if you did pray that prayer for the first time today, or maybe you prayed it recently and just haven't gotten a chance to do so yet, please be sure to stop by the yes table in the back of the room. It's just a great way to get this new journey with Christ started off, so please be sure to do that. Um, also, don't forget we have the giving boxes in the back of the room, but also, um, if I haven't gotten a chance to meet you yet, I would love to get a chance to do so. I'm going to be on this side of the platform after the service. Please come up and say Hello. Um, but as you go forth today, can you feel it? God's, God's moving. Can, can you hear it? God's speaking. Don't, don't give up quickly. Don't sit down and say, okay, God, I'm listening. Okay, I didn't hear anything. And God's sitting there going, but. Listen, be in his presence, hear from him because he is speaking and he wants you to live out this God sized mission for your life so that you can live a life that that honors God, that blesses others, that fills you with tremendous joy. Go and live that kind of life. Go in his name. Amen. We'll see you next time.